right. Thank you uh, uh, very much all for uh, coming and uh, uh, for organizing this uh, uh, session. So today I will talk about uh, the income gap, evidence, and uh, tax policy uh, implications. So this is, if you will, a, a summary of uh, uh, many studies I and, and co-authors have been doing uh, over the years. So let me start with uh, the evidence. So this chart uh, depicts the share of total income going to the top 10% uh, in the United States over uh, almost uh, a century. So this comes from uh, data we compiled with my uh, co-author, uh, Thomas Piketty. So what you can see uh, on that chart is that uh, income concentration was high in the first part of the 20th century with the top 10% income earners earning about 45% of total income. Then it fell precipitously during World War II. And in the decades following World War II, you had a much lower level of uh, income concentration down to uh, the low 30s. However, what is most striking on that chart is that since the late 1970s, the share of total income going to the top 10% has increased uh, dramatically. So that in recent years, 2010, here is the latest year, uh, we are back to a level of income concentration uh, as high as it was before uh, World War II. The second uh, striking fact about that uh, increase in income concentration is how concentrated uh, the change has been. And so you can see that in that second chart that breaks uh, the top 10% into three groups. Uh, in black, you have the top 1%, then uh, in blue, the next 4%, and in red, the next uh, 5%. Uh, and so what is striking here is that if you look at the recent period, you see that most of the increase, uh, really, you know, uh, over 80% of the increase in the top 10% share is really coming from a dramatic increase in the top 1% income share, from less than 10% in the late 70s to uh, about 20% uh, today. The groups just below the top 1% have increased, but really uh, by very small amounts relative to the top uh, 1%. So why does this uh, matter, that the rich uh, are getting richer? It matters first because uh, the changes have been so enormous that they really dramatically affect uh, our uh, evaluation or uh, the sense we get about uh, macroeconomic growth. So just to illustrate this, if you look at the recent period, 1993 to 2010, average real income growth per family has been 14%, which over a 17-year period is actually a pretty small, modest growth. However, the top 1% increased by 58%, uh, so that when you remove the top 1% and you focus only on the bottom 99%, uh, the growth of per family, pre-tax per family uh, income was only 6.4%, so less than half uh, of uh, the growth uh, of the average. So that's why when you hear about macroeconomic growth, you hear about overall average growth, but you can see that the experience for the vast uh, majority, here we are talking about the bottom 99%, is uh, sharply different because uh, uh, of this increase in uh, income uh, concentration. So uh, further down this table, I, I break down uh, the growth in various uh, periods. So let me uh, just say uh, this, that uh, the Great Recession uh, hit dramatically incomes. Of course, you know, the top 1% were hit particularly hard because of the, of, of the collapse in uh, 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 stock prices. But the bottom 99% lost 12% in real income during the Great Recession, which is something that had not been seen uh, since the Great Depression uh, in the United States. And so what is uh, perhaps most worrisome in that table is that for the last year, that is 2009 to 2010, the, when income started increasing uh, again in that first year, actually, uh, pretty much uh, all the growth was captured by the top 1%. That in th th their incomes increased over 11%, while the bottom 99% basically saw uh, zero uh, uh, gains uh, in real terms. So let me now uh, start talking uh, about taxes. So the evidence I've shown you is that pre-tax uh, 
top US incomes have surged uh, in recent decades, from less, the top 1% capturing less than 10% of incomes in the 70s to over 20% uh, today. So that means that uh, there is now a lot uh, of income. That is, there is potentially there a fiscal reserve at the top of the distribution. So just to, to, to put numbers in perspectives, currently the top 1% income earners pay an average uh, federal individual tax rate of 23%. Uh, if you were to double uh, that tax rate from 23 to 46 uh, Percent and 46 percent. I mean, it's obviously a, a high number, but it's something that uh, the U.S. has experienced uh, in past decades, uh, in the middle of the 20th uh, century, or s that some European countries uh, are doing. You would actually raise uh, three percent of GDP if you do the static calculation. That is, assuming that uh, there is no behavioral response to the tax change. So this is an enormous amount. This is 450 billion uh, per years or six trillion as uh, over the next decade as it is projected uh, in a, a, a standard uh, budget uh, projection. So that means that, so six trillion dollars is more than uh, repealing uh, all the Bush uh, tax cuts. So, so the bottom line I, I, I want to make here is that the top 1% definitely now has a large uh, potential capacity. But the key question we have to ask as economists, would higher uh, top tax rate uh, affect uh, the economy? And so, uh, so that's a question uh, I and many co-authors uh, have studied. So let me uh, uh, summarize it as follows. First, there is definitely strong evidence uh, that pre-tax top incomes are affected uh, by, by top tax rates. I'll show you uh, charts uh, you know, depicting that, that, that evidence. However, just from that fact, uh, it's not enough uh, to conclude whether or not it's a good thing to increase uh, top tax rates. So there are three potential scenarios that have very different uh, policy consequences. The first one is the supply side scenario, whereby top earners work less and earn less uh, when their taxes uh, increase. Under that scenario, top tax rates should not be uh, too high, because top tax rates are detrimental to uh, economic uh, activity. The second scenario is a tax avoidance or evasion uh, scenario, whereby top earners uh, avoid or evade more when taxes uh, increase. So if that scenario uh, uh, is the reality, uh, the policy consequence is very different because here, under that scenario, what you should do is uh, eliminate uh, loopholes, that is tax avoidance uh, opportunities that exist uh, in the current uh, uh, tax systems. And so there are a number of examples of countries successfully uh, eliminating uh, uh, tax avoidance opportunities. And then once those uh, tax avoidance opportunities have been eliminated, then it becomes possible to increase uh, top tax rates productively, so, to, so as to raise a significant uh, scenario. And let me uh, put here a third uh, scenario whereby that, that I call the rent seeking uh, scenario, where top earners uh, extract more pay at the expense of the 99% when uh, top tax rates uh, are low. So it's the uh, idea that high top tax rates uh, prevent, I, I mean, weaken the bargaining position, if you will, of the uh, top earners and uh, uh, puts uh, a lead on uh, top compensation. And under that scenario, uh, high top tax rates are actually desirable because they keep in check income inequality and they redistribute uh, uh, resources uh, towards the bottom uh, 99%. Uh, so let me uh, show you some evidence to uh, discuss which scenario uh, is the most uh, plausible. So here uh, is a, a chart showing you for a large number of uh, uh, OECD countries uh, the, top, the link between the top marginal tax rate and the top one income share in the country in the late 70s. So what you can see here is that in the late 70s, top 1% income shares are uniformly relatively low. That is, all countries except you know, Germany are below 
uh, percent, and tax rates are pretty widely distributed. With the U.S. having a top tax rate over 70 percent, you know, being on the uh, having a much higher tax rates, for example, than uh, France uh, at that time. And so, what is striking is that when you look at the same chart for uh, recent years, you see a dramatic shift. Uh, this way, that is, countries, all countries have eliminated uh, their very high tax rates, and top income shares have indeed moved uh, further up, with the most extreme case, you know, being uh, the US uh, uh, here. But you can see that today there is actually a, a striking alignment uh, between uh, how high the top tax rate is and how much top incomes get before taxes, okay? So this is the top income share before uh, taxes. So there is no mechanical uh, 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 link between the two charts. And indeed, when you look at the difference, you, you look at the change in the top marginal tax rates from the 70s to the present and the increase in the top 1% income share, there is a clear correlation between the two. That is, countries which didn't change their top tax rates, didn't experience a change uh, uh, in uh, income concentration, while the countries who did cut significantly did experience a surge uh, in uh, their uh, 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 top income. So this is, uh, I think, strong evidence that uh, there are uh, behavioral responses now. Do those behavioral responses, you know, is, is this coming, you know, from extra work, extra growth from the top 1% or is this coming, you know, that surge in top incomes at the expense of the 99%? So let me, it's, it's a hard question uh, to answer, but let me show you uh, very basic evidence uh, on this chart here uh, that shows, uh, again, you know, the same countries by how much they cut their top tax rates, you know, from the 70s to the present. Correl and, and uh, looking at their uh, GDP per capita real annual growth, that is their, uh, ec their economic growth uh, success uh, during that period. And so it's a scatter uh, cloud. And what is striking here is that you don't see actually any strong uh, 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 correlation. So it's not the case that the countries here, like uh, the US uh, or the UK, that have cut their top tax rates uh, very significantly have experienced uh, 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 more growth than countries, say, like Germany, uh, 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 who uh, haven't. So that evidence seems uh, consistent with, uh, 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 more consistent with the rent-seeking scenario than the traditional uh, supply-side uh, scenario. So le let me uh, come back uh, to uh, the United States uh, to finish, you know, the time series uh, in the United States that shows you uh, incomes for the top 1% in black you know, so that's here on this scale by how much they have grown. You know, if you have an index, you know, starting at 100 in 1913. Uh, and in diamonds, empty diamonds, uh, the bottom, 99%. Uh, and in red here, I have the top tax rate on uh, that scale. And so uh, what is really striking uh, in that graph is that in periods where the top tax rate is very high, like it was, you know, from the New Deal to uh, 1980. Uh, uh, That's a period where top 1% incomes uh, increase actually very slowly. And in contrast, that's a period where bottom 99% income increase uh, very fast. And when tax rates, top tax rates come down very significantly, you know, following the Reagan uh, administration tax cuts, and that's still the case today, uh, we see the exact uh, inverse pattern, namely the top 1% explode and uh, the bottom 99% grow uh, much more uh, modestly. Okay, so this, of course, you know, it's just uh, time series evidence, but again, you know, it shows you that the, the evidence here, again, seems more consistent with a scenario where you have rent seeking, that is, at a time, you know, where taxes are high, it's hard for the top incomes to bargain, you know, for significant pay, and it's, easy, and it's easier, you know, for bottom uh, incomes uh, to increase, and the reverse happens uh, in uh, when the top taxes uh, 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 come uh, down. And another important fact that uh, is visible in that graph and that should not be forgotten is that there have been periods uh, in the United States where you had extremely high 
top tax rates. You can see here, you know, tax rates are in excess of uh, 70%. And yet, there was good uh, economic growth for the vast majority. You know, that was a period where the US economy was growing and where that growth uh, was definitely benefiting uh, the bottom uh, 99%. Uh, percent. So to uh, conclude, uh, U.S. historical evidence and international evidence shows that tax policy plays a key role in shaping uh, the income gap. High top tax rates reduce the pre-tax income gap without necessarily uh, hurting uh, uh, economic growth. If anything, you know, the evidence goes uh, the other way. Obviously, in the globalized world uh, we are in today, uh, successful progressive uh, taxation likely will require uh, international coordination, but a country as large as the United States uh, could definitely uh, uh, play a central role. And um, in the end, the US public will favor more progressive taxation, probably only if the public is really convinced uh, that top incomes are unfairly earned and, you know, to the detriment uh, of the 99%. That is, I think that piece of evidence uh, 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 is central uh, uh, to convince the public that tax policy needs to be uh, uh, reformed in a, uh, in a very significant uh, way.